Sound design with the Nordram 3P is super fun because it sounds amazing and it's really simple to use. Nevertheless, with sound design on one particular instrument, you always tend to repeat yourself or create the kind of same rhythms over and over, which is why I like to have tools that help me come up with new stuff and especially stuff that is a little out of my comfort zone. And this video will be about such a device, which is the Nordram 3P editor by Ableton Drummer, which you can use in Ableton Live. First of all, hi and welcome to this video. My name is Janis and if you don't know Tobi from Ableton Drummer yet, just check out those links down below in the description because he makes some super amazing devices, especially for electronic drummers together with Ableton Live. Plus, he's a super warm person and he made this super cool device for the Nordram 3P as well that lets you control all parameters of the Nordram 3P from Ableton Live without ever touching it. And this is how it looks like. And as you can see, I can just change stuff here from my computer which is first of all super handy because I can save them here with actual names not only like G13 or H25 so you can come up with some more refined systems of storing your sound especially if you're creating your own sounds and kits a lot but this video won't be about the basic setup because he made some video explaining everything in detail. I'll link it in this info box and also in the description. Plus, there's also another video on my channel for connecting Ableton Live with the Nordram 3P. I'll also link it. This will be about how you can use it creatively. Because, I mean, this is now kind of self-explanatory that you can change those parameters. But the thing that I want to show you is about randomizations. And since we're in Ableton, we can use Rex. And Rex give you the chance to randomize. So you can see here that I have some MIDI effect track and if you don't know where it is, it's under MIDI effects. And here you have the MIDI effect track Then you can just load it and drag the main Nordram 3P editor inside. So here we have one chain with the Nordram 3P editor. And on the left side you can open the macro menu where you can find those macros that you can then assign to all those knobs. So if you right click on wave for example, you can map it to macro 1, you could map the spectra to macro 2. And I just quickly do it for eight knobs. And now we can basically randomize all parameters of the tone section. For now, I just deselected noise and the click. And the pitch is also consistent. It's actually from a kick drum sound, but it can still sound completely different. And if we let the sound play now, we can on the go just change it and see if we can find some cool sounds and can really become anything. And you can see for the fact that this is like some fully randomized creation tool, there are quite a few useful sounds already. And the great thing about working inside Ableton Live here is that you can quickly store them as a macro preset because you can click on this icon here and then you have macro variations so you can create a new one. And I mean, you can name them, but you can also just quickly store them. You just have to once click this icon and then you can always create a new one make a new randomization, store this one, and all of a sudden we have two kind of kick drum sounds. And this way you can make your own collections and store some sounds quickly, definitely also quicker than navigating on the device. And I really, really enjoy this. Now, of course, you might say, okay, that's very random. I want to be a little more specific. And you can also perfectly do that because while this was the fully random approach, you can also, for example, select one of those basic sounds. So let's use this first kick drum here. And let's say you only want to change the waveform, maybe the spectra, and maybe the decay, those three things. And everything else stays the way it is. So this way you can make it a bit more refined on how you want to randomize the sound. So you kind of create a system that is still random, but systematically random. So you won't get some cymbal sound probably this way. Let's see what happens. Mm, I like this one. So 
So you can also use it for your own sounds. If you, let's say you created some kick drum and you're just like, okay, give me just a few more variations. And then you just randomize a couple of parameters and maybe quickly you will have 10 variations that you can also choose from or even build some new kicks with. But it's really easy to do this and also cool because this way we don't always have to think of stuff ourselves. We can also get some input because sometimes this again triggers our creativity in a new way and we'll just have more fun creating sounds with the device. Of course it gets a bit more tricky if you include the noise but you can also map different parameters to the same macros. So you can for example map the noise decay to the macro 3 which is already the decay for the tone and this way you always have the same decay for noise and tone. I mean also you don't always want this but you can control it a bit because it's also awkward if you have one decay that is super short and the other one who is super long. And also you could do the same for the frequency although here we have not randomized it yet. And let's actually just do it with the decay for the noise and see what happens. And if you want to get really specific, you can always open the mapping menu by clicking on map. And you don't have the range options for all settings, but for example for the decay you have it. So you can say the tone decay has like the full range, but the noise decay only moves in like a smaller range. And just for you to know that you can really refine your kind of randomizations this way. And this is how you can use it for drum sounds. So for this example, I just picked a kick drum type sound, but you can just as well pick some snare drum, a tom, a hi-hat, percussion, you name it. But you know the principle now. In this video, I want to share another type of example with you, which applies to melodic sounds and which I even like a little bit more. So here I have a patch that sounds melodic, which means we have different pitches on those different pads, while the initial sound is the same everywhere. And you can do this by using the scale function of the Nordrum 3P, which is super amazing because then there you can automatically assign different pitches based on a scale to the pad. And in this case, the scale sounds like this. By the way, this is a little patch from my own sound library for the Nordrum 3P. It's called 50 useful Nordrum sounds. You can also get it. There's a link down below in the description. It just contains basic drum kits, synth sounds and also bass sounds. And now here, the important thing that you have to switch to the channel all settings. So if we make edits now, we will make them for all channels. That's really, really important. And here we need to make sure to have more of those because what we're going to do is we assign the first six tone settings to the first six macros here. I'm going to do it quickly. It's important to leave the pitch untouched because the great thing about this randomization is that it will remember the pitches of those individual pads or the scale. So we change the sound but we can keep playing the same melodies. So now when I press play I mean with those FM sounds you sometimes have so many overtones that it sounds a little out of tune but even this is cool. Let's try another one. A bit goofy. Okay. Interesting. Some nice bell sounds. I mean, yeah, if, you, if you're if you at the cymbal section, you don't get the tones anymore. But even here, you get some interesting cymbal patterns. And I mean, you see where this is going. And I'm sometimes surprised how often I end up with useful sounds this way. So at the moment, I'm trying to work on some kind of mobile live set with the Nordrum 3P and the computer, a few controllers. And it's super amazing to just assign this random button to any button of your controller. So with one press, you can just basically create a new pre preset on the fly. And that's just completely amazing and also inspiring to me. If you're interested in getting the Nordrum 3P editor for yourself, be known that there's a link down below in the description and some affiliate links. So if you use that link, you can basically say thanks for this video or support me a little without any extra cost for you. 
And here's also a warm invitation for another video because it's more about sound design with the Nordram 3P. And once more, check the links into the description because I made more content about the Nordram 3P. Apart from that, I wish you lots of inspiration with whatever it is that you create and hope to see you soon again at this channel. Bye.